Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So we're out here in the garage again and I would like to walk you through a recent project that I finished, which is wiring a brand new sub panel into the garage to power all of the power tools. This is gonna be a lessons learned video where I walk you through what I did and then how I'd do it differently in the future. All right, let's get on with it. Lesson learned number one, start with a plan and make it as complete and accurate as you can possibly make it. I actually started by modeling my garage in Fusion 360 and put all the artifacts that are already in the garage that I can't move into the plan and then worked my conduit and my boxes and all of my connections around what was already there. So it was tremendously helpful to go into Fusion and do a quick model of what was there and then I could play around with different options, putting uh, receptacles in certain locations, putting conduit in certain locations, and putting the um, uh, the box, the ju main junction box that I have in different locations. So let's go ahead and switch over to Fusion and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360. This is the first sketch that I made of the garage. Uh, the garage is essentially square, it's slightly rectangular. So this is the outline of the garage. You can see here the two garage doors and then the garage door openers and then the cabinets along the wall and the door going into the house. These are things that I really can't move around in the garage, right? So. The important things that you have to wor work around are here is where the electrical box is currently mounted as well as the garage door opener. You need to just be aware of those. And I did have one uh, existing retractable power source that it was in the ceiling, uh, attached to the ceiling. I could have moved it if I wanted to, but I left it where it was. So I just kind of planned around it. All right, so what do we have here? Um, I'll turn on the one of the sketches I made, which shows generally where I put my tools while I'm working in the garage. So you have the refrigerator over here, which is fixed. I don't move it. It's just in the corner. It's something you need to work around. My workbench, I generally pull it out into this, this area when I'm building something. Sometimes it's just up against the wall or it's out here. Uh, the drill press slash sanding station stays in the corner unless I'm pulling it out for some reason or another. I generally put my table saw over here off to the side. The reason I did this in the past is because there was actually power over there, which I would attach to the table saw. And then I would, for the miter saw, the router, and the planer, I would attach to the power source that was already in the ceiling. Um, but with the new design, I don't have to do that anymore. But I did like the layout. It works well. The flow and the erg ergonomics of the um, garage seem to work pretty well in this configuration. I could pull any of the tools forward if I wanted to, but generally I don't. The lights, and I will turn on the lights um, here. You can see there's six lights here and six lights here. The lights don't go too far forward in the garage, predominantly because when the garage doors are up, the lights will be covered up. But in the future, I might put more lights, another bank of six on each side. Who knows? We'll see uh, to build out the full complement of the garage. But I don't need that right now. OK, so I will turn the lights off. Well, I'll leave the lights on and I'll turn on all the conduit that I've modeled. So what you can see here is I'll zoom in. This is the main junction box. Uh, this is where all the power comes up out of the the main power panel and then gets distributed to all of the different uh, components. I put two receptacles here and here, one for each of the uh, garage door openers, and then two receptacles here and here for the retractable power wheels that I use essentially to power all my power tools. And then I have two receptacles here and here for uh, the lights. So these are actually on a switch, two independent switches, one for the kind of right hand side of the garage and one for the left hand side of the garage. I also added a power receptacle right here for the vacuum system for the dust collector. I wanted that on its own circuit because it draws a lot of power. Um, it's about 12 amps or so. So I, I, everything's a 20 amp circuit except for the garage door openers, which are on a 15 amp circuit because you never really, they don't draw very much power and they're never really running at exactly at the same time. 
So that was the original plan. And let me kind of zoom out and scroll up a little bit, show you I did model it in 3D space. You know, obviously the layout here, I do a lot of my modeling from the top view so you can see down. Um, but I modeled the boxes and the conduit and the lights just to get some sense of where things went. Now you'll notice real quick that there's like, there is an elbow here, but there doesn't really appear to be anything connecting it. Uh, so what I ended up doing is in the sketch, I actually drew in conduit to get a sense of how long the conduit needs to be so I didn't have to model all these individual pieces of conduit. And then I used that to kind of add up the total uh, amount of conduit that I needed. So. It, it worked out very well. It gave me a sense of where things needed to be and how I needed to model things. And it actually allowed me to actually create a bill of materials which was pretty accurate to the, the final product. So that was it. That's the design. It worked out almost perfectly. I made two big changes. I ended up adding some receptacles along the wall uh, to compensate for the lack of power really uh, behind where the tools are stored and on the left hand side of the garage where there was really only one power outlet and it wasn't terribly accessible. So I did add that. And the other big change that I ended up having to make is the switches. I intended to use the switch for the lights. I intended to use the existing switches who were already in the wall um, for lots of different reasons. I couldn't wire up those switches in a way that will allow me to pull the conduit, pull the wires down into the conduit. So I ended up putting in uh, independent switches on the outside with conduit like the rest of the design uh, for the light switches, which, you know, it ended up, I actually like it better. It, it works better overall. I put a switch for the lights that are now in the attic, as well as the lights that are in the main garage area. So. It ended up working out better. It just was not part of the original plan. And so that kind of led me to some of my other lessons learned, which we'll get to in just a minute. All right, you're probably wondering what the heck's going on here. Well, I wanted to show you one of the design choices that I made while doing this project that I would definitely do again if I had the opportunity. And that is this junction box right here. I could not find a matching junction box for this gray PVC for the project, so I went online and I found this box. Now, the box itself is actually very nice. Um, I don't have any complaints about the box. Where I made the mistake was this box is simply not big enough. If I want to have some future expansion, I'm really limited to the number of ports or holes that I have on this particular box. That's number one. Uh, number two, it's just not tall enough uh, for these conduits in particular. I had to make these holes. They have punch outs here that according to the website would have been the right size, but for the half inch, they worked out just okay. Uh, for the three quarter inch conduit here, uh, I had to make the hole significantly larger, which was a little problematic. And I really ran out of real estate here on the vertical side here whenever I cut the new holes. So that's lesson learned number two, bigger box, better expansion for the future. Lesson learned number three, buy additional parts in advance. So using the plan that you created in the first lesson learned, overcompensate by buying 10 or 15% more parts than you think you'll need. Uh, what that'll allow you to do is make adjustments on the fly without having to break your progress, run out, buy additional parts, and come back. Now in this specific example, these are all things that I purchased uh, that I can return. They're not necessary. Uh, any longer now that the project's finished, I might keep some of them around just in case I want to make some additional alterations in the future. Um, but I do have them and it allowed me to really make changes on the fly for things that I didn't think of during the initial planning process without having to run out to the store. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I did have to run out to the store probably two or three times for things that were not in the original plan that I would have never bought extra of. Uh, specifically, I had added additional conduit over here on the light switch wall. Uh, which required a couple of these uh, 90 degree turns that I didn't plan for. So that's something that I had to go off and purchase. Now, in this case, these are three quarters. I bought extra. I needed half inch. So uh, that's just something that it just might make things easier with the project. Lesson learned number four, properly size your conduit. Uh, so what I have here going into the panel are three quarter inch conduits. I thought that that would be more than enough. I was going to run two from the panel up to the box. I thought that would be more than enough for the number of wires that I needed to run to the receptacles throughout the garage. 
I really wish in hindsight that I'd use something more like an inch or an inch and a half conduit. Um, maybe two of them, maybe just one of them, but something that was much, much larger that would allow the wires to be fished through the conduit a lot easier. On that particular point, all of the conduit should have been upsized. Rather than using three quarters from here to the box and then half inch throughout the garage, again, I think an inch or an inch and a half from here to the box and then three quarters throughout the garage would have made my life a lot easier. So that's a really important tip, and if I had to do it over again, I would totally use larger conduit throughout. The final tip is design for the future. Think about the tools you have today, but plan a few years in advance and consider what tools you might be interested in buying and what additional capacity you might need. In this case, the panel that I put in only has six circuits in it or six breakers at this time. I do have room to expand another six breakers or six additional circuits if I want to do in the future. Now you do have to always remember this is a 60 amp sub panel, so the more circuits you put in and the more things that are running simultaneously, you might come close to the maximum load of the panel. If you do, chances are the breaker in the main box will flip and you'll have to go down and reset everything. But uh, that's just something to consider in the future. The other thing to consider is these are all 120 volt circuits. If you do end up adding some power tools in the future that require 220, um, you need to make that additional capacity available inside the box. The amperage might not exceed your load, um, but you need to have these additional circuits available for you in the sub panel in the future. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was an amazing experience to do this and you know, I didn't get any video of the actual making process, but that's okay because it's just a lot of uh, repetitive rinse and repeat sort of work. Nevertheless, here we are, brand new garage, wiring, ready to go for 2020. Well, thank you for making it this far. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave a comment down below so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please go out there and subscribe. This is where I post regularly about projects that I'm working on, and many of which become future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to be inspired. All right, thank you so mu thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to be subscribed. <laughs> Be subscribed. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lesson learned number one. Start with a plan. As complete as you can possibly make the plan. Plan ahead as much as you can for future opportunities. Do I want to say that? No, I don't want to say that.